Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. So after all this research that Casey Kern and Greg Pavone have done, it was time to start digging. But how would the property owner react? We're going to find out in our next conversation with Casey and Greg and to find out that they actually did conduct an amateur archaeological dig. And guess what? They found the cave. So it's going to be a fun conversation as they talk about, you know, international flights and, and, and everything. So um, it's a fantastic conversation. You won't want to miss it. And oh, by the way, if you haven't seen this on YouTube, go to youtube.com slash gospel tangents so that you can watch the video. Greg added a lot of, of video of them actually digging and finding the site, and there's pictures and movie clips and everything. So you do not want to miss this episode. So it's fantastic. Casey, thanks so much. You're an amazing editor. So I, I, I can't compliment you enough on that. So anyway, back to our conversation on finding the Mormon cave with Casey Kern and Greg Pavone. So, I, I mean, as someone, who, as someone who grew up in the church and loves the Book of Mormon, I couldn't help but be compelled by that. Wow. Uh, and here's a chance that I can maybe contribute to, to church history in a real way. So that was enough motivation for me to, because I was very busy in my nuclear prototype, believe me, that is a not a tough, that is not an easy course. It was very difficult um, learning. I, I was not a uh, engineer uh, undergrad, so it was a lot of uh, time and research. But I, on a weekend, I drove three hours west from, from Saratoga Springs, New York, out to Palmyra. This is now May of 2015. I'm in the, uh, in the middle of my course. Um, and I just said, so Casey and I talked about it and we, and I said, let's, let's, let's make contact and let's see, let's at least meet the owner and see what he has to say and see if he'll allow us to, to try to, to find, find the cave. Uh, so yeah, Memorial day weekend, uh, 2015, I drove out to Palmyra. I knocked on the door and I met the owner and his wife. They were very friendly. Uh, I told them who I was. Uh, I told them about Casey. I told them uh, that we were that we believe there. We have reason to believe there's a cave on his property, and we'd like to we'd like to find it. And so this was the same house that a few years before you had knocked on and they weren't home. Is that right? One, one year before, yes. Oh, like, like six nine months. Like, yeah. Even yeah. Year. June 2014 is when we we knocked on the door. They're not there. May 2015, I returned. Okay. Yeah. So uh, he was, again, very friendly, very nice guy. Uh, we're still on very good terms to this day. Uh, right off the bat, he's like, yeah, well, I'll take you up there. So we grab a shovel. I'm wearing a suit. Uh, we grab a shovel. We walk up the hill, and there's this huge impression, uh, almost as if, like Casey was talking about earlier, that the, the cave had been, like, detonated, and it, like, f something fell in on itself. So there's a, so a big hill. And then there's an impression in the hill, like a, almost like a crater hit it. Imagine that. And we have pictures of this. Yeah, right? yeah. And, I post it. and then, and then in the in the middle of that impression is a single tree. It's about that big around. And uh, I was like, "Huh, that's interesting. Uh, what is that? <laughs> right? <laughs> what is this on your property?" And and then there's clearly a tractor trail that somebody had driven a tractor up to this to this location. Now just one second. Had he heard anything about this cave before you guys said anything to him? He had heard, I think so. He had heard, um, people had contacted him before. I think he said some sister missionaries came and visited him. Yeah. At point. Oh, really? Yes, he had heard about it. Yes. Okay. So I started immediately, I started digging. I had, again, I had a shovel. Uh, I started digging and, you know, I, unfortunately, you can only go so far. I, I, I I came to the conclusion very quickly that wearing a suit, carrying a shovel, I'm not going to get far. I said, I, I came to the conclusion that I'm going to need more firepower. I'm going to need an excavator. And I'm going to need to cut that tree down because it's right in the middle of, of where we thought it was. And when you match, I took a picture of it. When you match that uh, impression with, with uh, Dan Vogel's picture, did Dan Vogel have a picture of that site? Uh, he did. That wasn't in his article, but, but we had... we. Uh... Yeah, it was consistent. It was consistent. So, uh, and then obviously we had to talk about if we did find something, uh, who would claim it. So we, we had to get a lawyer involved uh, who drew up a contract who said, if we found anything, the royalties 
and the uh, and the possession, possession. The possession yeah. would go to uh, the owner, and and we were totally fine with that. Um, again, so that was May 2015, and he said, "Absolutely, you're more than welcome to dig on my property." Wow. So I'm in Korea at this point. Yeah. So I'm not involved. So well. and, and if, if Greg had not made these uh, these overtures with the um, uh, with the owner, this never would have happened. Uh, but okay, so so you know, I'm excited to hear that. I'm like, you did great work, Greg. This is this is awesome. Yeah. Uh, we've, you know, we have an in now, and uh, but then there was also this is going to be a big job. Uh, yeah. You know, we're going to need we're going to need some heavy machinery. We're not going to do it with a shovel. I, I quickly came to that conclusion. Yeah. So uh, so I I start um, making phone calls uh, around, around local farm equipment in Palmyra. And uh, and found find this place that uh, that rents out uh, you know um, earth moving equipment and and tractors and and farming uh, equipment. Uh, and now we're talking about money too. Now we're having to invest our own money into this. Problem. I was just gonna say that. Yeah, like this is gonna start costing money. Did you start a GoFundMe or something? No, you know we we self funded it. Uh, full disclosure: renting an excavator for a weekend costs about seven hundred dollars. Okay. We split all the costs. Uh, we, we had to pay us. the lawyer fees. For the yeah, contract. yeah, we had, we had to pay the lawyer fees too. Um, Which was probably seven hundred dollars an hour, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was all well worth it. We're not rich people, but it was it was definitely worth it for for what happened next. Uh, so we decided on. So I graduated from my program in late August, which and then I had again the, the baby training pipelines. Typically, you have about a, two weeks or, or a month of leave between sometimes between your next training. So I had about a, a month off. Um, in the, so now fast forward to September 2015, and that's when we decided this is when we're going to do it. Now, so again, I'm in Korea. Remember, well, he's this. in Korea. So, so it's like you know, just doing a weekend trip to New York is is no small uh, small deal. So, but we had this window of opportunity that was from um, oh my your, while you had after you had graduated, but before you had your next post. Yeah. And then, um, meanwhile, I was on a project that uh, involved some market research in the U.S. and it involved going to various retailers uh, throughout throughout the U.S. Pretty much one meeting, one day at a time. So uh, we're mainly looking at the pharmacies and, and drugstores. So it's like on Monday I, I was at Wal at uh, Walgreens in Illinois. On Tuesday I was at Costco in in Washington. On Wednesday I was uh, where did I go? Uh, oh, like in in Ohio, and then. Uh, the, the schedule was I, I was supposed to meet um, uh, Rite Aid in in on Thursday and then Walmart on Friday, but the Walmart meeting got canceled, and that pretty much opened because I, I was planning on being in Arkansas on Friday and then and then uh, and then being able to maybe take a, a couple some time or the weekend to to go fly up to to Palmyra, but that meeting got canceled and that left me in Pennsylvania meeting Rite Aid on Thursday. And I was literally, you know, a, a three hour drive away from, from Palmyra as my business trip was ending. So, you know, it was, it was really just like, whew, wow, the stars are really align, aligning. We're, we're, we're both busy people. And you flew back on Sunday or Monday? I, I think uh, Sunday US time and then okay. ended up landing Monday night. So we only have what, between Wednesday and Sunday to make this happen. That was our time window, and and I'm I'm doing my business trip and and trying to wrap things up and you know, very stroke of fortune that I got an extra day and I got a uh, hundred miles you know a thousand miles closer to to Palmyra by by that meeting being being canceled. And so what what that what that meant was that Greg was going to go there first, um, and I, I had arranged for the excavator to to be dropped off on their property. The um, the owner was actually quite good with hydraulics, so he actually volunteered to do all of the all of the uh, excavator operations. The owner of the equipment company. No, the, the owner of the of the property. Property. Oh, okay. He had a vested interest in this. Yeah, I mean, th this this was literally his home. It was awesome, and and he hmm. you know, he wanted to be a, a part of this. Yeah. So I have my journal here uh, from from Wednesday, September second. So I show up on Tuesday night. Uh, and we agreed on Wednesday was the day we're going to do it. And this matters because the owner is taking time off of work of, 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 out of his life to make this happen. <laughs> and uh, so we, we started, so we, the excavator is on site, got delivered. Um, 
we started digging. Uh, we dug for four hours all morning on Wednesday, September 2nd, found nothing. Uh, and the first, sorry, I should back up. The first thing we did, we had to cut down that tree. I have saved the portion of the tree and I present it now. This is uh, a, <laughs> wow. Well, that's cool. I, got, I put some, I got it lacquer, lacquer to, to save it as a, as a memory, but this is the tree um, that was in, right in the middle of that, of that site. Wow. Uh, and we, when we counted the rings, we figured it was about 30 years old. Um, Which is to say that this was not around in Joe Smith's day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we knock down the tree and we start, and, and it's me and the owner start operating the, the backhoe, the excavator, and start digging uh, into the side of this hill. And so we dug for about four hours in the morning, didn't find anything, break for lunch. We dug for about four more hours in the afternoon and we're going deeper and deeper and, and, and farther and farther down. And, and this is massive amounts of dirt. Yeah. Like yeah. No, no way you would be able to do this with a shovel. Yeah. And you have, you have to see the pictures to really uh, understand how much, what we're talking about. Now, Joseph Smith did it with a shovel though, right? Uh, right. I mean, it, this is a big job. Like it's a big job. I, I, I mean, the, the whole treasure digging prof profession kind of gets uh, cast as these, you know, scalawags and, and ne'er-do-wells, but like, this was hard work and, and they were all probably ripped after doing this, this level of digging. Yeah. Um, and about after eight hours, we, we don't, we don't find anything. And, and honestly, though excited about this, I actually had, I had my doubts. You can call me a doubting Thomas. I had my doubts the entire time, whether this cave actually existed. Like the, the research seems to point to it, that it, it, it is there, but I mean, I think I'm at the right spot in the digging. I'm not finding anything. So I, we were, I'll just say discouraged by about 4 p.m. that afternoon. The, the local who lived down the street came over uh, around that time and confirmed that, yes, this was the spot that he remembered from 1963 when he was 19 years old. Uh, and so we, we had just finished another round of digging and it's about I wrote it here. It's about 4.45 p.m. And we were kind of just sitting and resting because in, on top of the backhoe, we were, there's also me with a shovel. Uh, so the owner was operating the backhoe, me with a, sh me with a shovel. And we were kind of just resting. Uh, and then the owner's friend came over as well. And the owner's friend had a metal detector. And as we were going farther and farther in, he was metal detecting to see if anything popped up. So we were sitting there kind of resting. And we had been we had been concentrating on this on the lower left hand portion, which is going into the into the side of this hill, and uh, our again we're a little discouraged. But then all of a sudden, and it's funny how life this happens in life, a piece of dirt where we were not paying attention to the in the upper right hand portion uh, of of the site, a piece of dirt suddenly fell, and we were all just sitting because we were all sitting there watching and like. Hmm, that's interesting because we weren't even, we weren't focusing on that, that area. And uh, after that, our, so that redirected our attention towards the upper right uh, portion of the site. So we, we, the, um, the owner's friend went up there with his metal detector and started detecting. And he's now going up because it's, it's pretty steep. So he's detecting, uh, uh, upwards, and at one point he lost his balance. And as he lost his balance, he reached into the side of the hill to catch himself. And he said, and he, he stabilized himself and he said, the dirt over here is a lot softer. So I get very excited and I immediately run up there and me and him start uh, with our hands um, digging in that, in that area. Uh, and all of a sudden, I reach through and I'm no longer I'm no longer hitting dirt anymore. I, I hit free space. So what was previously dirt was free space, and then it's like, whoa, this is real. Um, and we quickly dig that side out, that part out, and we both look in, and sure enough, there's this huge cavern underground cavern. It's a cave. It's real. And I got chills at the time because I just, I, I still get chills thinking about it because it, it was, um, it was surreal. I, I honestly never expected it uh, to be there. And it went from 
something in my mind and something uh, that Casey had researched to reality in, in a moment. That's crazy, man. So we all, we all went nuts. Um, me, the owner, the owner's wife, the owner's kids were there. The dog was there. Uh, the neighbor came over. He had, his, he had his sister over. And we were all hugging each other. We found the cave. It's real. We found it. So were you here by now, Casey, or were you, or were you still Unfortunately, I was in the air uh, flying across the country during these moments. And I remember landing and, and you know, I'm just like, I got, I got to see, like, how was the progress on the first day? And I, you know, connect to the internet after I get off the, off the plane and, you know, a new message from Greg, we found the caves. And, no then, way. and then, you know, kind of like incoming image, the blurry gets, gets sharper. And it, it was just, you know, my jaw drops as I'm, as I'm walking through the airport. So the owner, I was taking time off of work. So he told his boss and his coworkers about that, he, about what we were doing. And he said many of his coworkers and some of his friends made fun of him, uh, taunting, you found that gold Bible yet? And it, it, it didn't, it, it reminded me of Joseph Smith. And I, and I couldn't think of, I couldn't help but think about how Joseph Smith was oftentimes taunted and made fun of for some of the claims that he made. Um, but I mean, reality is reality. The cave is real. And, and that's the, that's the bluff. The bottom line up front is, is that the cave is real. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Casey Kern and Greg Pavone. In our next conversation, we're going to talk about what they found inside the cave. At the base of the cave, there were these, these, um, wooden boards and we honestly not being archaeologists didn't want to damage anything so we we dug down probably 10 feet or so uh yeah and inside the cave inside the cave got all, cleared all the dirt out but there were these these wooden boards that we didn't want to necessarily fully we didn't want to keep going down we were running out of time and we were running out of time <laughs> If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, please subscribe for just $5 a month at patreon.com slash gospel tangents, and you can hear the entire interview before everybody else. If you'd like to watch the entire video for just $8 a month, you can either subscribe on YouTube, Patreon, or my website, gospeltangents.com. Just click the yellow subscribe button, and I'll add you to our Gospel Tangents Insiders group so that you can see entire videos. For those interested in a PDF transcript, you can subscribe at either Patreon or on my website. For just $10 a month, I'll send you a PDF as soon as it's complete. If you'd like a copy of the paperback as well as a PDF, just sign up for $20 a month at either Patreon or my website, gospeltangents.com. Of course, you can buy individual transcripts at amazon.com and just do a search for Gospel Tangents interview and you can see all the things that we have there. Don't forget to support Gospel Tangents with an awesome t-shirt like one of these. You can subscribe at Apple Podcasts at tinyurl.com slash gospeltangents. Get our latest updates at facebook.com slash gospeltangents. Also, you can get our Twitter updates at gospeltangents. Click here to subscribe, here for a transcript, and over here we've got more of our great videos. Thanks again.